today we will start discussing about a very important topic in microfluidics which is surface tension driven flows. As we have discussed earlier that as we go down to smaller and smaller scales surface effects become more and more important as compared to volumetric effects. So, there are possibilities by virtue of which one can exploit surface effects to a benefit or surface effects may be used as a control mechanism for controlling or driving or actuating fluid flow. For example, when we think of a pressure gradient driving a flow, it is a uh, it is really a challenging proposition to create a good enough pressure gradient to drive a good amount of flow through a microfluidic system because of huge huge frictional losses. So, what one can do instead of uh, using a pressure gradient directly one can exploit a pressure gradient that is implicitly induced because of a surface tension gradient. So, it may be possible that naturally occurring surface tension gradients are there or naturally occurring surface tension forces are there or surfaces can be engineered to create surface tension gradient and because surface tension occurs so nicely in small scale systems it is very important that we study the behavior of surface tension or the characteristics of surface tension driven flows in general and surface tension driven micro flows in particular. So, uh, a brief motivation what I have discussed that uh, in small dimensions surface tension dominates over other forces. So, uh, it is not that it is a very new kind of force it is something which nature has been knowing for a very long time. Like if you think of the transmission of water from the lower level to the topmost level of a tall tree, how that is possible? There is no pump, there is no pump made by engineers by which water is pumped from the root to the topmost level of the tree. But how it is possible? It is possible by surface tension, it is possible by capillary action. So, because of the smallness of the capillaries that we will see that because of the smallness of the capillaries surface tension force can lift the water to a significant height and that significant height is good enough for supplying the uh, tallest the topmost branches of the tree with the necessary water that is sucked from the ground. So, uh, there are many examples where surface tension forces are important like uh, one can uh, use surface tension force to manipulate droplets, to manipulate bubbles and these droplets and bubbles are also very important in microfluidics based uh, applications. So, uh, we will uh, briefly revisit the fundamentals of surface tension that is what is surface tension and why is it important. So, I will uh, come to the board of course, it is represented in the view graph also, but we will utilize this view graph for mostly summarizing our observations, but uh, uh, just for simplicity we will not uh, consider a complicated scenario, but co consider a very simple scenario when you have a container. there is an interface, the interface separates the vapor from the liquid. Okay. Now, I mean whether the interface is flat or curved forget about that at this moment, we will discuss about all these issues in much more details later on, but uh, for the time being let us assume that the interface is of some form, some shape. Let us consider some liquid molecule here. When the liquid molecule is here, this molecule is acted upon by forces equally from all possible sides because all sides are surrounded equivalently by other liquid molecules. So, there is equal attraction 
from all the sides. However, consider a molecule on the interface. When you are considering a molecule on the interface, what is happening? On one side you have liquid and on another side you have vapor, which is more dense liquid or vapor? Liquid is more dense. So, liquid being more densely packed, it is more likely that this molecule is attracted more strongly from the liquid side as compared to the vapor side. If that be so, then what is the possibility? Then the possibility is that this liquid, this molecule at the interface, interface has a very special character, we do not call it liquid or vapor, but it is an interface. But it is also having molecules and this molecule will have a tendency to dissolve into the liquid phase, but that does not happen because if that happens no interface can be formed. So, interface is formed that means that the molecules at the interface are having grossly speaking from the system level they are having some energy so that they can overcome that attraction this net attraction and remain at the interface. So, this is called as interfacial energy or surface energy. Now, not only that how this energy is expressed typically it is expressed like that. So, when you have an interface because of this reason the interface is considered to be under some tension and since the interface is considered to be under some tension this state of the interface is described by a force which is also called as surface tension and it is expressed in terms of force per unit length. So, uh, uh, the surface tension or the surface tension coefficient sigma between two phases is expressed as a force per unit length of the interface. So, its unit is Newton per meter. Okay. So, this is what uh, is summarized in this view graph. So, uh, you can uh, see that uh, uh, like there is a volume element which is identified and we are that volume element crosses the interface or cuts across the interface and we are seeing that there is a differential force or extra force towards the liquid as compared to the force towards the vapor because of the differential density. Okay. So, this is what we have discussed I am not going to reiterate uh, I mean this view graph discusses about what is surface energy and what is surface tension. So, of course, there are more formal definitions associated with this, but this is a qualitative way of understanding the concept which will be useful for us uh, for our analysis. Now, we will of course, start with a basic uh, understanding of surface tension, but the question is how can surface tension actuate or control fluid flow that is what is of very important concern for us. So, of course, surface tension itself is like a force and as a force it can actuate the flow by itself. On the other hand there are other subtle means by which you can control flow by surface tension. How? Other than surface tension being utilized as it is, you can use the gradients in surface tension, not just the surface tension itself, but gradients in surface tension to manipulate the flow. So, that is possible by using a gradient in temperature. So, gradient in temperature can create a gradient in surface tension, this is known as thermocapillary flow. Uh, we will discuss about this in details and the corresponding convection is known as Marangoni convection is one of the uh, uh, like classical mechanisms by which you can control uh, uh, surface tension driven flow by virtue of temperature gradient. 
So, not only that you can create a gradient in concentration because gradient in concentration can create a surface tension gradient. You can use electric field to modulate surface tension, we will see how that is possible. You can modulate contact angle through design hydrophobization or hydrophilization of solid substrates. So, you can control the surface tension force by altering the contact angle and the contact angle can be altered by making the surface or designing the surface either hydrophilic or hydrophilic hydrophobic with a particular contact angle or a combination of above effects. So, these are some of the possible ways by which you can create gradients in surface tension. So, these are some of the ways by which you can modulate the flow other than of course, using surface tension itself to manipulate the flow. So, using surface tension itself is something obvious that is what I have not kept that in this uh, slide, but uh, I mean the creating gradients of surface tension to manipulate the flow is something which is not always that intuitive. Now, we will start with a very basic law or very basic equation governing surface tension and that equation is known as Young, Young Laplace equation. So, Young Laplace equation what it does? It relates the pressure difference across an interface with the surface tension. So, to understand this I will uh, also draw some schematic in the board to supplement what is there in this view graph, but first I am explaining you what is there in the view graph because the schematic which is there in the view graph uh, I will not reproduce that in the board, I will reproduce only a part of that in the board. So, let us say that there is a membrane with dimensions x and y. So, this dimension is x, this dimension is y. Okay. So, this is a membrane and uh, this is a curved membrane. So, the side width x has a radius of curvature r 1 and the side width dimension y has a radius of curvature r 2. Okay. So, these are sometimes called as the principal radii of curvature and uh, uh, like these uh, similar considerations are used in many other uh, uh, aspects of uh, engineering like for example, if you are talking about pressure vessels and all these things the different radius of curvature they come into the picture. Now, forget about that let us come to this particular example. Now, because of a pressure difference between the inside and the outside, there is a change in the area of the membrane and there is a displacement also of the membrane. So, how that is possible? So, because of the pressure difference, there is a displacement delta z and because of the work done by virtue of this pressure difference there is an additional energy imparted to the interface and that makes the interface assume a greater area because the surface energy has increased. So, what has helped in increasing the surface energy that is the work that is input to the system by virtue of the pressure difference between the inside and the outside. I will explain you that how to qualitatively assess that uh, like which side is of higher pressure, which side is of lower pressure and all those things. I will discuss about that in details in the board, but uh, now so the membrane is stretched. Now once the membrane is stretched because it has now more surface energy as work is input to it. So, you have now the dimensions of the membrane as x, x becomes x plus delta x and y becomes y plus delta y. Okay. So, with this little bit of understanding let us come to the board and uh, we will uh, figure out uh, the eraser, where is the eraser, just bring the eraser.
So, let us uh, say that this is one of the curves of dimension x, I am not drawing the other one of dimension y. So, this becomes x plus delta x. And this is R one, and I have just magnified the figure to make it clear to you. Of course, like these are all differentially small changes. So, this is delta z so from similar triangles you can write r1 by r1 plus delta z is equal to x by x plus delta x right so this becomes r1 by delta z is equal to x by delta x if that be the case we can similarly write that r2 by delta z is equal to y by delta y right because the radius of curvature r2 is associated with that side with dimension y and radius of curvature r1 is associated with that side with dimension x now let us apply the work energy consideration what is the work done to push this interface from the initial location to the dotted location delta p into a into delta z right delta p is the difference in pressure across the two so that times a is the net force and force times displacement is the work right and this is equal to the increase in surface energy because of the stretching of the membrane. So, surface energy is surface tension coefficient or surface tension, surface tension and surface tension coefficient are the same, they are just same things expressed in two different terminologies. So, surface tension coefficient times the change in area delta A. So, what is the change in area x plus delta x into y plus delta y minus x y so this is sigma x into y gets cancelled with x into y then x delta y plus y delta x you can neglect delta x delta y these are this is a small lower order term as compared to the other terms and what is this a here a is x into y so we can write from here what is delta p sigma 
x into delta y divided by x y z x y delta z. So, sigma delta y by y delta z plus delta x by x delta z. Right. Now, look at this. What is delta x by x delta z? This is 1 by r 1 and this is 1 by r 2. So, we can write finally that delta p is equal to sigma into 1 by r 1 plus 1 by r 2. This equation is known as Young Laplace equation and a very, very important equation because it relates the surface tension with a pressure differential. And you know that by a pressure differential, you can even create a flow. Now, uh, so surface tension as a driving force, what it is fundamentally doing? Surface tension as a driving force is actually creating a pressure differential. So, although it is a force acting on the interface, but it is eventually giving rise to a pressure differential across an interface and that pressure differential is actually manipulating the flow. Okay. So, now uh, if you consider the surface tension as a force, therefore this will appear to be a force in the Navier-Stokes equation only at the interfacial control volumes, where there is a sudden jump in pressure. So, that is the way in which it you can treat it numerically, but in this chapter we will mainly concentrate on how to handle these issues analytically. Now, let us ask ourselves certain very simple questions. These questions might appear to be too simple, but let us try to answer that even if the question is simple, I mean it is it is okay uh, uh, if we attempt to make an answer. So, the first question is that we are writing delta p. So, when there is an interface, there is an inside of the interface and there is an outside of the interface right. So, delta p we are talking about what p in minus p out or p out minus p in. So, and how do we know that? So, whenever we are asking any question uh, this is what uh, I mean for any examination or any tutorial or any discussion I would always encourage that whenever I am asking a question, I am not minding a wrong answer because many times I can also give wrong answer or wrong interpretation, but it is more important that what is the logic that you are applying to give the answer and that is that is where actually the concept lies. Sometimes we may use the logic little bit incorrectly so that final answer becomes wrong, but sometimes the final answer is right, but we just know it as an information rather than, an, than, uh, than something which is of scientific origin then that kind of knowledge actually has no value. So, let us try to see what is the scenario. Let us say that this is an interface. Okay. Now, can you tell that if this be the interface, then what is the direction of the surface tension force? So, the surface tension force 
just like if, if you have cut the interface here, it will be the interface is in, will be in, in some form of tension. So, now if you resolve this force in various components, you can see that this component and this component they may cancel and along this direction let us say this is x direction along this x direction you have a resultant force due to surface tension right. So, if you have a resultant force due to surface tension here then you also have some force due to pressure. So, you have a resultant force due to pressure inside from this re always remember that pressure is by definition positive pressure means acting inward normal to a surface. So, this is a force due to inside pressure, this is a force due to outside pressure if this is inside and this is outside. So, for equilibrium we can say that force for pressure inside is equal to force for pressure outside plus force surface tension right. This being a positive quantity that means force for pressure inside is greater than force for pressure outside that means pressure inside is greater than pressure outside because they are acting on the same area. Okay. So, do not just make it like an information that you want to remember. If you use this logic, you can come to this conclusion by very simple mechanics that where should the pressure be more inside or outside. So, this is nothing but P i minus P o. Now, let us see that how do we apply this equation. Let us assume that there is a channel, in this channel there is an interface, this is liquid and this is vapor. Okay. So, now you can clearly see that this interface can be of any shape right. You cannot presume that it is spherical or whatever, but if this thickness is small, if this height is small then it can be thought of as a part of a large sphere without making very significant amount of error if this gap is small then like this can be thought of as a part of a sphere. So, this can be thought of uh, if you if you imagine a large sphere this can be a part of the surface of this of the large sphere. So, if you have that kind of a situation then for a sphere R 1 is equal to R 2 is equal to R sphere. Okay. Why I am so much emphatic with this subscript R sphere here, because R sphere is not same as the radius of this capillary that you must understand. right? So, the radius of this capillary let us say is this one and the radius of, of curvature of the sphere is something different from that. 
Okay. So now, if R sphere is something which is known and you can clearly find it out provided you know what is the contact angle and we will discuss about what is the contact angle later on. I have not yet introduced the definition of contact angle. So, uh, we will stop there for the moment, but for a sphere we know that because R 1 is equal to R 2 is equal to R. So, delta P is equal to sigma into 1 by R plus 1 by R, R sphere plus 1 by R sphere. So, 2 sigma by R sphere. This is a formula that you commonly use in undergraduate texts for finding out the pressure difference between inside and outside of a droplet, spherical droplet. So, this is how the formula comes. So, uh, one important thing we can get from here is that in many cases assuming the interface to be of spherical shape is not something uh, which is uh, pragmatically bad. So, we can assume that and uh, let us uh, go to the next view graph where we do the same thing. The previous derivation that we made that delta P equal to sigma into 1 by R 1 plus 1 by R 2 is general. It does not assume any shape of the interface, but if you assume the shape of the interface you can do the same thing for a droplet or for an interface which is a part of a sphere and for that we can use the considerations of energy minimization for making the derivation. And I will show you that how the same see the first derivation that we did is purely from work energy principle right. The work done due to the pressure differential is adding to the surface energy that is the work energy principle that we used. Now, we will use a energy minimization principle. What is that? That a droplet in its equilibrium shape will try to adhere to a configuration with minimal interfacial energy because that is its stable configuration. So, uh, what is displayed in this view graph is a droplet which is a part of a sphere. Then uh, there are certain parameters which are defined. We will first define the angle theta which is called as the contact angle. So, again I will come to the board to uh, discuss a little bit more about this figure and more about this derivation. So, let us say this is a substrate and a droplet is sitting on this substrate which is a part of a sphere. Let us say that this is like a hemisphere, up to this is like a hemisphere. This black is actually a part of the hemisphere. This is uh, liquid, this is vapor and this is solid. So, you have a triple phase contact actually. Now, what you do? You draw a tangent to the liquid vapor interface and the angle that is made from the liquid side with that, that angle is called as the contact angle with respect to the substrate. So, this theta is called as the contact angle. Now, different surface tension forces act 
along the interfaces. So for that see when we say sigma it actually has no meaning we have to say sigma with respect to which interfaces solid liquid, liquid vapor, solid vapor what, whatever. So when we say the surface tension force here so what should be the subscript so sigma between liquid and vapor so you can write sigma VL or LV that makes no difference but commonly we write sigma LV. So the in the formula where we write 2 sigma by R that sigma what we write is commonly that is actually sigma LV okay. Now what is this? This is sigma SL or LS whatever you say and this is sigma SV. So what is the surface energy of the droplet? sigma SL minus sigma SV into ASL plus sigma LV ALV. What is ASL? ASL is the solid liquid interface area. So if this is say radius, some radius, then pi into that radius square, right? This is remember this is a part of a sphere, so its footprint on the solid surface will be a circle, right. If you cut the sphere from anywhere you will get a circle. So then what is the liquid vapor interfacial area? The liquid vapor interfacial area is the area of this curved surface, the black curved surface. Now this energy is minimized subject to some constraint. What is that constraint? Volume of the droplet is conserved, right. So the volume of the droplet must be conserved. So this has to be minimized subject to constant volume. So it is as good as minimizing this minus lambda V equal to 0, where this lambda is called as Lagrange multiplier. This is one of the ways in which we solve optimization problems in mathematics. That minimizing this with a constraint that V is a constant is as good as minimizing this minus lambda into V. Where lambda is a parameter which is known as Lagrange multiplier. We will see that what is the physical significance of this Lagrange multiplier in this case. Now to proceed further we have to figure out what is ASL and what is ALV. So uh, let us construct uh, some uh, more lines in this figure. So we join this line like this. So this blue dotted line is perpendicular to the green dotted line because the green uh, sorry green solid line because the green solid line is tangent to the surface of the sphere and this blue dotted line is the normal. That means this angle is 90 degree minus theta. So this angle is also 90 degree minus theta. Okay. So ASL. So what is this particular radius? If R is the radius of the sphere, 
what is this radius r sin theta right So, ASL is pi r square sin square theta. This black curved surface will be a full hemisphere when this theta is equal to 90 degree. Okay. So, when this theta is equal to 90 degree, then this will be just pi r square, where r is the radius of the sphere. Now, let us find out what is ALV. To find out ALV, what we do? Let us consider that at an angle phi, this angle is phi arbitrary angle we consider a small strip of d phi So, what is the surface area of the shaded region? So, it is a small part a small slice from the sphere is actually like a small cylinder with some radius and some lateral dimension right. So, 2 pi what is this radius? r cos phi so 2 r cos phi 2 pi r cos phi into r d phi right and so alv becomes this integral with phi from what to what phi is equal to 90 degree minus theta to 90 degree so this is what 2 pi r square sin phi from 90 degree minus theta to 90 degree. So, 2 pi r square into 1 minus cos theta. Check for theta equal to pi by 2 that is the surface area of a hemisphere that is 2 pi r square double of that is the area of a sphere 4 pi r square. So, this is A L B. What is the volume of the sphere? I, I mean part of the sphere. V is equal to so 
So, it is like pi r square h, right. So, pi r square means r square cos square phi into what is the height of this one? r d phi is the lateral dimension cos of that. So, r d phi cos phi. Again from 90 degree minus theta to 90 degree. So, pi r cube integral cos cube phi d phi from 90 degree minus theta to 90 degree. Now, we can express cos cube theta in terms of cos 3 theta. So, we can write cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. not visible in the board. Huh? So, write it little bit below. So, cos 3 theta is equal to 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. So, instead of cos cube phi, we can write cos 3 phi plus 3 cos phi by 4. So, this will become pi r cube by 4 cos 3 phi will become sin 3 phi by 3 plus 3 sin phi 90 degree minus theta to 90 degree. So, pi r cube by 4 minus one third plus 3 then minus minus with another minus will make it plus. So, cos 3 theta by 3 minus 3 cos theta right. If I make any algebraic mistake please correct. So, pi r cube by 4 8 by 3 plus 1 by 3 cos 3 theta minus 9 by 3 cos theta. So, pi r cube by 12 8 plus cos 3 theta minus 9 cos theta. <coughs> Substitute theta equal to 0, 
uh, sorry theta equal to 90 degree that is a hemisphere you substitute theta equal to 90 degree this becomes 8 pi r cube by 12 that is 2 by 3 pi r cube double of that is 4 by 3 pi r cube which is the volume of a sphere. Okay. So, let us write this simplified expression for E sigma S L minus sigma sigma S L minus sigma S V into pi r square sin square theta plus sigma L V into A L V 2 pi r square into 1 minus cos theta. minus v into lambda so minus lambda into pi r cube by 12 8 plus cos 3 theta minus 9 cos theta this is what is the expression for E. For minimum E, what you have? One is del E del R equal to 0. So, that means sigma S L minus sigma S V into 2 pi r sin square theta plus sigma l v into 4 pi r into 1 minus cos theta minus 3 lambda pi r square by 12 into 8 plus cos 3 theta minus 9 cos theta equal to 0 and you also have del E del theta equal to 0. That means sigma S L minus sigma S V into 2 pi r square sin theta cos theta plus sigma l v into 2 pi r square sin theta minus lambda pi r cube by 12 in is equal to minus cos 3 theta is minus 3 sin 3 theta and cos theta this will become plus 9 sin theta that is equal to 0 right. Please check carefully whether there is any algebraic mistake because we will uh, continue with these expressions for finding out an expression for uh, uh, like the equilibrium condition for the droplet. So, uh, to summarize what we have discussed so far in this particular lecture, we have discussed about what is the 
work energy principle that governs the relationship between the pressure difference across an interface and the surface tension coefficient. And then for a droplet which is a part of a sphere, we have tried to derive the same consideration from energy minimization principle. So, we have written an expression E which is the energy minus lambda into volume. So, for a constant volume that needs to be minimized. So, for minimization of that we have set the partial derivative of that with respect to r and theta equal to 0 and we will derive our subsequent relationships or subsequent expressions by using these two final equations. We will take it up in the next lecture. Thank you very much.